the holiday season. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time I'm streaming this month, I'm doing giveaways. Yes, I, I'm aware of that. And the reason I've been doing that is mm -hmm. because I was supposed to do a sponsorship where I was doing giveaways the whole month of December. Yes. They told me today they're not doing that. Oh. <laughs> so now I just have to <laughs> give a bunch of stuff away because I already said I would. <laughs> So, well, <laughs> that's where we're at. These giveaways. Enjoy are, my money, guys. <laughs> these giveaways are going to become shockingly cheaper. They are. I got them from hundred dollars a, a stream to fifty. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But anyway, also I'm mad at some of the people here because uh, they just do the giveaway and then leave. Last night or the other day when I streamed, I rolled like five different people and they yeah. weren't there. <laughs> so. If you're not there, uh, today we're doing the drawing at 10 o'clock. If you're not there, you lose the $50. Yeah. So that's it. That's the end of it. So name the company. I can't. I can't name the only other thing <laughs> that's a competitor to honey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, how are you doing? I forgot to turn up Streamlabs. Will, how are you today? I am good. I'm just letting you know right now that uh you got the farts yes because okay. <laughs> went to my parents oh our, that's a real i would just yeah i just assume no no uh we went to i went to our parents today mom sent me home with a big heap and a chili for dinner okay. so if you hear or smell anything that's what that is <laughs> okay i just you know just the natural state yeah is is ripping ass <laughs> <laughs> anyway mm -hmm. Guys, hello. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the end of the year. Yeah, not a lot of new stuff going no. on, but it's a lot of recaps, yes. and gift guides, and whatnot. If you're if you're not sick of seeing all your friends on Twitter posting their Spotify recap, we got more for you today. We got we got a recap, but it's Nintendo it's, and it's Sony. Your, it's your Nintendo unwrapped and your Sony, uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I mean, why, why don't we just do it? Yeah. You know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do mine. I haven't touched this at yeah, all. Yeah, me I neither. I haven't done it. I assume we start with Nintendo? Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, I'm just gonna warn you and the chat, uh, mine is going to be shockingly low. <laughs> I have, to, we do this every year. Yeah. Every year, ours is pretty low. Yeah. But this year, it's gonna be even lower because i've been playing games on pc yeah. do they have a steam version but also honestly <laughs> probably not that big over there either yeah it's probably it you know i play on yeah. a lot of different things well i mean does i would imagine steam would have a good version of it you know yeah why not i'm surprised they i'm surprised they don't have that already uh all right so here we go bob check out all the fun you had why is mario kart a oh because of the dlc mm. most played Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Now I have to put a little pin in there. Hmm. I did leave Smash Brothers on for a really long time, a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> as experiments. Okay. So that might be a little skewed. Mario Maker 2 actually played. Kirby yeah. and the Forgotten Land actually played a lot of Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Yeah. Because I played through the whole game, but I played through it as if it were like Elden Ring on hard mode. Like okay. every time I got hit, I immediately killed myself. <laughs> got so it. it took me a lot longer to get through Kirby and the Forgotten right. Land than it should have. So I spent a decent amount of chunk of time on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Okay. Uh, you ready for this? Sure. Uh, Shredder's Revenge, which okay. I think that's obvious if you watch the show. Yeah. Great game. You should all play it. Um, Saints Row 4 Reelected. <laughs> okay. Which is... Like, it's good on Switch, but that's definitely a game you want to play in TV mode, not portable mode, which is how mm -hmm. I primarily play. Um, and Quake, the original Quake. Now, okay. <laughs> here's the thing. I don't know if this is in order. I mean, I'm assuming Shredder's Revenge is my most played game of the year so far, mm -hmm. on Switch at least. I could have sworn I played a lot more Quake than I did Saints Row. Because I'm not far in Saints Row at all, and I'm already on, on like, episode two of Quake. I gotta be honest with you, I don't know which one of these I played more of. So, I don't know if it's in I mean, I remember last year there were some uh, issues. 
Yeah. There were some issues mm-hmm. with, with, the, with, with the list. There were there's some things that clearly shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Uh, you played a lot of Quake? I did. Quake on Switch, you, whichever version, t- handheld or TV mode, actually excellent. Because the levels are short, you pick them up, you blaze through them, and then you can move they on with your short. life. With yeah. the controller? Yeah. I played a very little bit because I learned that you could play with a keyboard and mouse on yeah. the Switch. Uh, and yeah, uh, that game fucking rules. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And it's always on sale. So get it. It's kind of amazing that the game runs so smoothly and, and feels so good for how old it is. Like like yeah. games back then didn't really have the same sort of like fluid motion yeah. that, that, that they have today. Yeah, it's it's actually very similar to the new Doom games, like with how fast you move and how yeah. like chaotic it gets and stuff. Right. So uh okay. Next, uh played at launch. I played everything at launch. Every game I played at launch. Uh, I only have one game played at launch, and that's Shredder's Revenge. Okay. Uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Pokemon Violet, and Nintendo Switch Sports. But I play everything at launch because I feel obligated. To. Right. I'll also note that every single one of these, pretty sure I got them early. <laughs> like I got, like I went to mom pop shop that break street date. Yeah. And I got them like a day or now. When it early. says played at launch, like does that mean the day it came out, or is like there a window? definitely a window yeah sure. but like what's the window i want to know probably a couple days yeah why what's when did you get shredder's event i mean i look it up uh, i could i definitely got it around launch i don't know if i got it at launch mm-hmm. so. so people are asking me where we found this probably should have said that oh yes uh this is nintendo dash switch dash 2022 dot nintendo dot com yeah, if you just go to Nintendo's official website, it'll be there on the front page. It's Nintendo Switch 2022 Nintendo.com. Yeah. Uh, again, that's Nintendo dash Switch dash 2022 Nintendo.com. Uh, but yeah, you could just Google it. You'll probably find it. Uh, what else? Let's go down three plus years of play. Smash Brothers, Mario Maker 2, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That's I have surprise. NES online and SNES Switch online. I'm surprised my Mario Kart 8 is so high. Yeah. But I, you know, I used to play that a lot as like a community game. Uh-huh. It's a e- really easy game to play with like just a large group of people. Yeah. But I really hate Mario Kart. I know. Kart, so I try everything I can to a- avoid playing that. Lately, yeah. I've just been saying, fuck it. I don't want to <laughs> play this game at all. So, yeah, I would think I would have the Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Yeah. Especially the N64 stuff. I've been playing a lot of that. Anyway uh bob what was your favorite game this year by month it says one of 39 what does that mean did you one of 39 months is it 39 games let me see one of 39 right there huh because i i have one of 12 you can do by month or by time okay if i do by time smash brothers is my most played of november Mm -hmm. with 38 hours 32 days played i guess the whole year that must be the year yeah um again in november specifically i left smash brothers on on at least two switches right over 10 hours uh i was not playing the game (laughs) but i have also i did also play a decent amount in november uh by month it says in january pokemon legends arceus that makes sense uh also played Azure Striker Gunvolt, mm-hmm. Striker Pack. Yeah, I played 39 games is what I think this is. Okay, so I guess I've played 12 games this year on yeah, Switch. Yeah, I'll blast through mine. Nintendo Switch okay. Sports, uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, mm-hmm. <laughs> Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Salt and Sanctuary, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Muse Dash. That's a rhythm game. Okay. Uh, Colors Live. Remember that? That's the drawing yes. game. Nintendo Switch Sports. How are you clicking through all those? I'm clicking that. Oh, you're... Uh, Disney Classic Games Aladdin, uh, Apex Legends, nope. Fortnite, Monster Hunter Rise, Quake, Doom 64, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Crisis Remastered, Splatoon 2, uh, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Academy, Asphalt 9 Legends, Rocket League, Mario Maker 2, Mario Strikers, Mario Strikers, oh, the first kick, that counts as oh, a different game. yeah. Mar- uh, Nintendo 64. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey, Clubhouse Games, Splatoon 3, Splatfest, uh, Super Mario 3D World, 
Kirby's Dream Buffet, which is the worst game I've ever played <laughs> on the Switch, probably. Fall Guys, or at least the worst first party game. Yeah. Uh, Splatoon 3, Doom, Overwatch 2, uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Pokemon Violet, uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, uh, Link's Awakening. And that's it. I should okay. note, most of those, probably 80% of those, played for less than 10 minutes right because i'm just jumping in trying something out for a video and then leaving yeah uh me it's capcom or capcom arcade stadium that's only because they were giving away street fighter 2 for free right so i wanted to try that out um saints row 4 reelected. it says i played it um eight uh, for eight different days uh for a total play time of two hours okay okay um tony hawk one and two i also played it's oh okay, here we go Mario Kart 8, uh, Nintendo 64, Switch Online. I played that four different days. I, d I couldn't tell you the games I played. <laughs> I probably just opened it, checked out what the new games were, and then put it down. Um, Super, uh, Super Nintendo, Mario Odyssey. Did I play Mario Odyssey? I just want to really, I want to interrupt you really quick yeah. and show the CAPTCHA for the Sony one. Okay. Is that use, heart? use the arrows to rotate the animal to face in the direction of the hand. Odd. <laughs> like that, I get like the, the, yeah. the way it's pointing. Okay. Okay, I did it. All right. That was weird. Uh <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember when I played Mario Odyssey this year. I don't think I did. Uh also don't remember playing Alien Isolation this year. Yeah, uh, that they're just trying to fill time yeah. here. Uh NES Online, Genesis, Switch Online. I know I've played a little bit of that here and there. Quake. Uh, wow, it really does say I played less Quake than Saints Row. That's crazy. Oh, so it does have the time. Yeah, it says days played and hours played. So how much time did you do with Quake? One hour. That can't be true. That can't be true. Yeah, something's wrong. Yeah. Maybe Unless you they just didn't sync your cloud save or something. Maybe. Or, or maybe the game is just that quick. <laughs> mm. um, Shredder's Revenge. And yeah, back to the start. Uh, PlayStation's not working for me. Really? Looks like something went wrong. Oh, maybe the link's broken. Maybe. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, well, I put it. It's I. I think I put the link to the the blog post. Yeah. Oh, that's the link I clicked. All right. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, try wrapup.playstation.com. I clicked the link on the the playstation website and it broke too. okay what if i just didn't play anything this year? <laughs> i don't know uh anyway yeah wrap up that playstation.com it didn't work for me oh wow uh your gaming trends five percent adventure eight percent role playing 15 percent fighting i guess that's smash brothers 18 percent yeah. platformers 37 percent action now action is too broad yeah, i hate that yeah remove action 19% multiplayer. I If you remove action, because every single game that I played is an action game. Yeah. Uh, if you remove action, the majority is fighting platformer and multiplayer, which makes the most sense. Yeah. Action's just stupid. Uh, thank you for playing. That's it. Apparently, on Sony, my game time is up. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what... Maybe because I played more Xbox last year. Okay. But it says I, I played 40 hours total, which is 18 more hours than last year, up 82%. Uh, Artsy Moose sent me a link and it worked. So, oh, to Sony? Yeah. But before we move to Sony, I want yeah. to... I, it gives you a little thank you for playing. Hope to see you in 2023. Recommended for you. Do you remember when I did... Remember when they had the... Uh, that weird program where you can like ask a Nintendo rep, yes. you can, like schedule yes. a call with them and ask them for game recommendations. Yeah. And I did it and they had some really good recommendations. Yes. Uh, let's see if this lives up to it. <laughs> Games we think you'll like. And you click on it and it's a whole thing. Uh, yeah. Well, on this little marquee, it says Dragon Quest Builders. Okay. 
Kirby Fighters 2. Why do you think I would like that? Because I played a yeah. lot of Kirby, I guess. Yeah. But I played Dream Course, and that was horrible. Ukulele. Now, this is one of the ones that the rep uh, said I should play. Yeah. Marion Rabbit's Sparks of Hope. Get the fuck out of my face. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2. That makes sense. Does it make sense? Okay, and then you click on the link and it says, top picks for you. First of all, this is my face. Second of all, <laughs> Just Dance 2 is the first one. Oh, okay. Sorry, Just Dance 2022. This thing doesn't know what I like. LOL, surprise remix. We re reworld the world. Uh, for me, it's uh, The Force Unleashed, which I've already played. Uh, Celeste, which I've already played. Uh, Bulletstorm Duke of Switch Edition, which I have in my w uh, watch list okay. already. Uh, Kingdom Hearts, Melody of Memory, no. Red Faction Gorilla, which I would play. I would actually be interested in that. I click the link and it says uh, Republic Commando, which I have on two different systems which is already. Great. Yes. Um, the Witcher 3, Splatoon 2, Pokemon Sword, Mario Party, uh, no way. Dragon Ball <laughs> Fighter Z, which is a good game. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon. <laughs> so under that, there's a for you, for you on sale. The first yeah. one's Axiom Verge, which I have oh, me too. recommended a lot. Oh, good. Look at that. I have also have Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition, which is okay. great because I probably have the regular edition on Switch. Uh, My Hero 1's Justice 2. I remember the first one. Oh, yeah, I got that too. Yeah, this thing does it. Yeah. This thing is, is stupid. Their algorithm is broken. Yes. Uh, on the Horizon, games to look forward to in 2023. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Duh. Fire Emblem Engage. I think I see that. Yeah. We have the same ones. Yeah. Uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, which is the remake of the Wii game. Yes. And Octopath Traveler 2. No, thank you. Yeah. Your points balance, I have 1,070 gold and 250 platinum. I have 149 gold and 150 platinum. I never the, redeem these. The platinum points are useless. The gold points are what you can use towards games. Okay. So I use them all the time. No, I never. I should start using them. Yeah. I always forget that I have them. So that's like 10 bucks that I have. Yeah. Shit. I got to use that. There you go. All right. Before we move on to Sony, let's. We got a lot of subscribers we got to thank. Yes. Uh, Indie Gex, thanks for the two months. On a rage, thanks for the five months. The Konami man, thanks for gifting a sub. Chris BX, thanks for the 51 months. Caleb Fox, thanks for the six months. Twitch is like high school relationships. You celebrate every month, even though you probably won't get married. Happy six months, Wolf Bros. Oh, happy six months. Uh, Goad Bag, thanks for the prime. Storm Crow, thanks for the 10 months. Kiss my buns for the <laughs> 10 months. Babusan. Love you. I love you too. Strider Inc. Thanks for the two months. What devices do you two play on the most? I try to alternate between the, the different systems. Like right now I'm on PS4. I'll probably hop on Switch for like a game or two here and there. But, you know, it just depends on what I buy the game for. Realistically, I probably play the Switch the most. Yeah. But, uh, I, well, no, you know what? I take that back. I probably play on PC the most because when I'm not making content, I'm playing warzone or, yeah. or valorant <laughs> and and cumulatively that's probably taken up a lot more playtime. but yeah otherwise it's probably the switch but again i i, I bounce between too many things mm -hmm. also i i another device i've been keeping with me a lot is the miu mini because it's just so tiny yeah and I, I, I it's easy to pull out and play um carl over derm thanks for the 10 months happy 10 months bros happy 10 months mm -hmm. Nico Moso, thanks for the 13 months. DRX, DMRX24, thanks for gifting us up. Thanks for gifting two subs. Did you do the one from 360 degrees of... No. Oh. It says, thank you for the advice a few weeks ago on using DaVinci Resolves. Uh, so I take my video editing to the next level. I really enjoy it. Love your content on all platforms and channels. Thank you. You're very welcome. I have, uh, I requested that a couple times. Uh, I think that week. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. A bunch of people were just asking me about editing software. Yeah. I was just like, just get DaVinci Resolve. But nobody ever listened. Yeah, I'm always like, get DaVinci Resolve, and then they just don't. <laughs> so, so I, I never have feedback on whether or not it's actually useful for well, somebody to get into video yeah. editing because uh, I've never used it. 
I tried using it, and my problem is I was so used to yeah. Premiere by that point. I'm like, I'm not learning a new editing software. It's just hard because, like, there's never a project where I don't need to just do it. Yeah. You know, like, I can't take my time on it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to sit down and yeah. learn a new editing software. Um, okay. I think we're good. I think we can now yes. do Sony. Yes, let's... Uh, oh wait, this is. Yeah, that's it. No, it says artsy moose. Oh, sign out and sign in on is you. No, but th he's. I think he sent me his. Okay. Wait, view my page. Yeah, it doesn't want to give me mine. That's so. Try incognito mode. Okay. That's so weird. Uh, do yours though. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I've done 40 hours total in for this year, 2022, which is up apparently from last year. Uh, I have no PS5 games played, but all of my time is in PS4 games. Uh, I feel like that's going to be a lot of people. Uh, 19 days, no time spent in PSVR. Hold on a second. We got to pause and look at my capture once again. Oh, God. This time, it is pick the image where all the animals are walking in the same direction as the arrow. What is with these I captures? I, am I a robot? <laughs> Hold on. You might be. Are you on your VPN? Wait, I wasn't done. Okay. I'm not on my VPN. Okay. Now, now I have to do two-factor. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Why, why is it giving me global community statistics for Horizon Forbidden West? I did not play that game. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I didn't even algorithms are flawed i didn't even start horizon zero dawn i uh i i, I doesn't like me wow it like me at all that's interesting i played stray yeah that's literally all i played on my playstation maybe that's why so i played seven games this year which is one more than last year can i just what did i play can i just look can i just go to Oh, okay. I played uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was my top. And then Miles Morales. Then Resident Evil 3, which I just beat. Uh, then Roller Drome. And then Sonic Mania. Roller Drome. I got to play Roller you Drome. You do have to play you got Roller Drome. Sonic Mania on PS5? 4? It was a PlayStation Plus game. Uh, and I think I just downloaded it because I needed something to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh. Can I look at my history? My favorite genre is action adventure. And now there's an ad for God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> okay. I see what this is going. It's giving you what you want to know, like all your stats. And then it's like, hey, here's a new game you should play. Uh, so, uh, it, it, this is just a giant advertisement. As well yeah. As. I did play Guardians of the Galaxy. That game is like three times as long as it needed to be <laughs> it really was did you beat it i did you beat a lot of games this year i i tried to well let's go back to this i did beat uh guardians i did beat miles morales and i did beat resident evil 3 okay so that's three games i beat this year <laughs> okay um yeah i mean i do like to when i start a game i do like to at least get to the credits mm -hmm. but um yeah, I can't believe I did that many games. And I have two kids. If, if you go to my games library, it is Stray. Resident Evil Director's Cut, the original game. Jeez. Tekken 2. Okay. Ape Escape. Fall Guys. Genshin Impact. Okay. <laughs> so, I didn't do shit this right. year. I just played Stray, basically. Uh, next is trophies. I got 86 new trophies this I year. I want to see where my trophies are. Up from 95%. Holy shit. Uh, no platinums because I'm not a crazy person. One gold, six silver, and 79 bronze. I'm trying to find if I could see my, like, I want to see, like, my trophy history, yeah. you know? Apparently, my first, according to this, my first trophy was Little Big Planet. Oh yeah, PlayStation Three. Yeah, that makes sense. And then my that was the probably the first trophy you could get. Yeah, my most recent trophy was from Resident Evil Three. I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then an ad for Gran Turismo Seven. Big whoa! All right, I give up. All right, I'm on the last. Well, wait, I'm on. 
I think I'm on the second to last one. It's weird the way they do it because you have to click the different PlayStation symbols to get like each uh, of the different types of stats. And then there's an unlockable section once you do all four. So let's see. Uh, PlayStation Plus granted access to 833 games. Uh, your time with PlayStation Plus in 2022, 34 games. Yeah, because I add them all to my library. <laughs> Yeah, me playing Resident Evil and Ape Escape and yeah. Tekken and stuff was just me testing out the uh, yeah the, the 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 what do you call it the, the extra yeah uh, and I gotta take myself off of that. I don't you still haven't it. done that. Yet. I still haven't done it. Uh, and then oh, there's an ad for Bob's Game of the Year. Stray game sucked. I know. <laughs> we could talk about the Game Award stuff too. Yeah, well, I have that in the a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Got absolutely robbed. Okay, so I can I can share my summary card with y'all if you want to know that I played Guardians of the Galaxy for most of this year. Not my fault. The game's too long. <laughs> Ooh, I've earned an avatar of um what's that name? Not Sackboy, the robot, Astro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We like Astro. Yeah, he's Astro's cool. playroom's great. Yeah. And 2023 and beyond. The first well, first it's Final Fantasy VII, like the next one in that. And then the second is PlayStation Stars. That's the that's their they're not NFTs, <laughs> yes. but they yeah. <laughs> there was gonna be NFTs, and then realized NFTs were bad. And then Forspoken, Resident Evil Four Remake, Hogwarts Legacy, Street Fighter Six, which looks awesome by the way. Okay. Um, it does. Jedi Survivor, uh, and then back to Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Street Fighter Six doesn't come out for a while, right? It's like April or something. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Or it doesn't have a date. It's like spring or or, or something. I thought it was April. I don't know, but I need it. I'm itching for a reason to use my like yeah. all button fight stick thing. Just as 2023. Okay. I mean, I got guilty gear. I'm wrong. Yeah. One of these days. One of these days. I'll try. Uh, hey, we also you know have a recap here on Twitch. Yes. Uh, I guarantee you, if I clicked mine, it would just be this channel. <laughs> you should. You should. I want to see that. <laughs> all right. As a streamer. Your 2022 Twitch recap. Uh, here it is. Wow. You brought us together. 142 broadcasts. 114,000 hours watched. Uh, 967 clips created. I want to pause there. Every single clip. almost I would say 99% of the clips that are created here on this channel are absolute dog shit. People <laughs> just click the clips button. Yeah. And don't realize what it does and then click away and it saves for some reason. Oh. It shouldn't save unless you add a title to it. Or click save. Anyway, highest uh, concurrent viewer count, I think that is, mm -hmm. uh, 1,000. Uh, you went live with your community 142 times this year. That's a lot of memories made. Oh, no, it's, not, it's really not co compared to a lot of other Twitch streamers. Mm -hmm. And we're all still talking about that one stream, your biggest of the year, with hundred with 1,116 viewers. It's, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> how I feel about that because yeah. it's like... That was my biggest one, but like it was my biggest one because I probably got fucking raided by yeah. somebody with all of those viewers. So it's like, thanks for shoving in my face the viewership yeah. that I can't achieve by myself. Anyway. Anyway. So, yeah, my favorite streamers is us, 100 hours, uh, six messages, uh, 22,000 channel points earned. Uh, next, apparently, I watched an hour of Scootish, <laughs> an hour of Wood. Okay. And an hour of Thrill House. Okay. There you go. I'm gonna, I've watched you, apparently. I'm going to go out on a limb here <laughs> and say it's because we raided them after the stream and you just never clicked off. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> um, and your community grew, too. Uh, new subscribers, 1,000. I don't there have, you go. We don't have 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> That's right. inaccurate. Or I guess people who subscribe. and, and Or this is Twitch Prime because Twitch Prime doesn't auto-renew. Uh, new followers, 8,000. That's cool. Channel points, 32 million. Holy shit. Channel, uh, chat messages, 167,000. Uh, and then there's the emotes everybody uses. Uh, a lot of the, uh, wolf bop for the, uh, the little podcast logo. A lot of the podcast logo. Uh, 553 gifted subs. Your top category is just chatting, which is this. Mm -hmm. Super Mario Maker 2. Seems accurate. Kirby yeah. the Forgotten Land, accurate. And Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? 
So mine is that doesn't make any sense. Just chatting, Mario Maker Two, Smash Brothers, and Salt and Sanctuary. That you're watching? Apparently, <laughs> favorite categories. Those are everything that I've streamed. Yeah, I've never seen you stream Salt and Sanctuary. I did stream it. I'm I'm going to Twitch Tracker because Twitch Tracker will also show yeah. you the uh, I guess the top games. Uh, so this isn't for the year is the problem, but it's just chatting, Mario Maker 2, Smash Brothers, and then Warzone. Uh, I wish it would tell me of the year, though. That would be... What did Twitch say? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, where's Scarlet and Violet rank on this? Oh. Because I did not stream that that much. <laughs> did you stream another Pokemon game and it just confused itself? It, it, that's a possibility. Pokemon is so low on on my list. Yeah. Of whatever. Anyway, uh, and that's it. And here's a little uh, little infographic. And then as a viewer, I've watched my favorite streamer is Scootish. There you go. I'm in the top two percent of chatters for Scootish. <laughs> then Nade Shot. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, Rob CD. Now that I do know why he walks yeah. around Japan all the time. He's always on really late at night, and I just leave it on while I'm editing. <laughs> uh, and then beat him ups. You know. Him. Yeah. Uh, that is one. I'm on the top one percent of chatters. And and then my favorite categories are just chatting, Valorant, Warzone, and Arceus. Okay. 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 Uh. Anyway. So that's that. That I guess is our year in review. I wish there was a Steam one. Yeah, but you know what? I need Steam. I need BattleNet. I need <laughs> I need a Riot client. You know. Yeah. I I heard some. I was watching one of the. I think it was Hank Green, and he said that they should bring back YouTube Rewind, but turn it into that. Like yeah, yeah like yeah, a yeah. recap thing. Because I would I would love the hell out of that. Because I would love to know what channels I'm watching a lot and stuff. They have it for YouTube music, mm -hmm. but I, like, I barely use YouTube music. It looked like Steam had one for last year, but it, I guess it's not. They just haven't done it yet. Yeah. Did, did, because I saw that Nintendo dropped this today. Did PlayStation also drop it? I think it so. Today? Interesting. Okay, what did you people play? Yeah, tell us. Tell us. Uh,. I'm I'm reading my PS rap says I have 287 hours, 97 percent of which is Final Fantasy 14. Wow, what a nerd! <laughs> All of these companies want to recreate Spotify Wrapped without any of the personal touches. Sad. What are the personal touches in Spotify Wrapped? I I, I I like the like way Spotify Wrapped is laid out, but it's ruined on me because everybody fucking uses my Spotify. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, make sure you get a family plan before you actually use your Spotify with your family because mine is mine is something else. Uh, I mean, it does. It's like very like upbeat and like, hey, you listen to this this year. That's awesome. You also listen to this. Way to go. Like, you know, it's very like self-affirming and yeah. like not trying to shame you for what you listen to, even though I should be shamed for what is on my Spotify right now. Ruby Ramble, thanks for the subscription. And J Buggy, thanks for the 61 months. 61 months. No longer gonna be able to sub monthly on both here and YouTube, but I will try to remember to use Prime instead on Twitch. Hi, there you bro. go. Yeah, you don't need to sub on YouTube. I mean, you don't need to sub here either, but YouTube is like, I feel like the most useless unless yeah. you comment a lot. Because if you comment on YouTube videos, you get the little like icon next to your comment. It said the uh, YouTube recap is in the app for YouTube Music, but like I can't find it. Oh, here we go. Your recap. Do you use YouTube Music? Uh, occasionally, because like if I if I'm out on my own, I want to listen to something that's not on my phone already, and I don't want to use Spotify because you know my wife needs it with the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, nothing. Apparently, I don't use it enough to. <laughs> All right. Official Dark Side Dev says I have five thousand eight hundred and twenty-two hours in Destiny. Hours I... to days. <laughs> two hundred and forty-two days. Okay, so almost an entire year. Destiny to release date. Twenty seventeen. <laughs> it came out that long ago. That makes sense. Okay. All right. 
then you're allowed to yeah. do that many hours. Uh, all right. Oh, no bananas. Who says? I think Asmund Gold took your spot for me, meaning like the top streamer. He hates mm-hmm. dogs. Did you see that? In the no. Show? No. He's, it's somebody. I think somebody said that in his in his chat. Somebody said Fauci is a beagle killer. Yeah. And he, and he goes. So what do I care if somebody kills dogs? <laughs> dogs are worthless or something. Oh, like that. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> oh, that was a double. That was a double one. Yeah. Fuck? Anyway, sixteen gambit. Thanks for the nineteen months. There should be a recap of the year for work too. You punched the air twenty seven times this year. You sat in one hundred and twenty four meetings. That should have been an email. Way to go. <laughs> that sounds horrible. It does. I don't want that at all. Uh. All right. We can move on. So yes, to news. News. I moved the Game Awards stuff to the top because I figured we're doing recaps. Might as well. Might as well do. I just put the Wikipedia page for this year's Game Awards because they have all the winners there anyway. Sure. So this way we don't just just plow through it and move on with our lives. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't play a lot this year. I really didn't. Me neither. Yeah. That much great stuff this year. We already went through the Game Award nominees. You yeah. We watch what we feel about the nominees. We go through every single one. We pretty much rip apart what was nominated. Yeah. Everything that's nominated for a big award is probably a third person action game. Yeah. Probably made by Sony. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's heavily skewed. Yeah. And it's no surprise what ended up winning. Yeah. I mean,. For the big categories, especially, it was down between either Elden Ring or God of War, and that's pretty much what happened. Elden Ring won Game of the Year, uh, Game Direction, uh, Art Direction, uh, God of War won Best Narrative, Best Score in Music, Best Audio Design. Uh, Christopher Judge, who played Kratos, won Best Performance in a 40-hour speech. That was bad. Yes. Yeah, I, had, I left and came back, and he was still talking. I mean, I get it. Also, too, part of me was like, this isn't on TV, so they don't really have to cut for time. I mean, I get you have to, like, get the show moving along, but, like, he, you could have let him keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that. They should have cut him off way earlier. But the problem is then they started cutting people off later in the show much earlier than Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, they should have yeah. cut. They knew they were going to have to do that. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, but then they started playing music for him, and he just didn't give a shit. Yeah. He just kept going. Um. Where are we? Uh, I think we're down to games for impact, which I don't think anybody still understands. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I didn't. I don't know any of these games except for As Dusk Falls. Which one? Which one? Yeah. Uh, I should also know. I believe that's the only Xbox Game Studio that w- was nominated for anything and that won anything. And we can get back to that when we go to the game announcements. So like Xbox had a very bad showing this year. Okay. Um, it now is, is that because they have nothing or is that because the game awards skews PlayStation? It's primarily because they had nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, best ongoing game, Final Fantasy 14. That uh, makes sense. I agree with that, yes, that one. Yes. Uh, Stray, best indie game. Now this is horse shit. <laughs> That's, it's only because it's a Sony title and... I guess it's a new studio. I guess. But Cult of the Lamb was fan- it was an actual mm-hmm. good game. Right. That had good gameplay. Yes. Neon White was probably the best game that I played all year mm-hmm. and was different and unique. And I haven't played Sifu. That looked really good. Yeah. And Tunic was really good. But Tunic wasn't exactly unique. It's just a Zelda game. Yeah. Uh, Stray wasn't a good game. Stray definitely had that big Sony push behind it it was just it looked nice and had a good idea you're yeah oh, wow and, yeah. and and it had a lot of yeah it had a big push and it had a lot of eyeballs on it yeah and it was a big release did they announce it at the game awards i don't think they announced it at the game awards but it i think the biggest thing was it, it was included in playstation plus extra at launch right which is not something sony is like really pushing like games releasing an extra day and date no banana suits has a good point. Vampire Survivors was probably better than those two. Vampire Survivors was that big, yeah, yeah, game that exploded and wasn't in any of this. Yeah. Stuff. Um, I mean, 
Also, Game Awards kind of skews heavily consoles. Yes. There's not usually a lot of PC stuff here. Uh, Speaking of that, best mobile game went to Marvel Snap. Again, I don't like that game. (laughs) That's really interesting because a lot of people are playing Marvel Snap. I do think it's probably worthy of an award, but didn't it just come out? It came out very recently, yes. Was it? I guess it must have been before the cutoff. Yeah. Because the cutoff was... Uh, whenever God before, of War came out, that was the cutoff. Yeah, basically. The, 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 the cutoff was kind of a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I was a little su- surprised by that. Yeah. I would have... Uh, Genshin Impact is a yeah. great mobile game. Uh, Diablo Immortal, like, DLC, uh, microtransactions aside, like, people love that game. Yeah, that one's problematic because yeah. of the microtransactions. Yeah. Uh, Ape- I haven't played Apex Mobile. But I have played Apex on Switch, and it is not great. <laughs> uh, community support, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, best VR or AR game, Moss, book two. That's a nice that surprise. That was surprising. I yes. thought for sure it was going to be Among Us. Again. Oh, yeah. Uh, underscore says Marvel Snap was in beta for a year. That makes okay, a maybe that's why. Uh, God of War Ragnarok won Innovation and Accessibility. Now, that makes sense. Yes. I mean, PlayStation's usually really good at accessibility, at yeah. least PlayStation Studios. Uh, the Last of Us Part 1 probably had phenomenal uh, yeah. accessibility, but it's just the same stuff that was in Part 2. Mm-hmm. So, And that already won, so yeah. give it to somebody else. Uh, Bayonetta 3, best action game. I haven't played Bayonetta 3. I don't think there's much innovative <laughs> or different about Bayonetta games. I feel, well, yeah, I'm sure it's not that different from between one and two. Mm-hmm. But then again, Modern Warfare 2 is not that different from all the other Call of True. Duties. Um, Ninja Turtles is not that. I mean, it's a great game, but it's not that different from the arcade games stuff from the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Neon White and Sifu are like probably the two more unique games. That's what I'm saying. In this category, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Neon but, White is phenomenal action game, but I would say Sifu probably. Yeah. And then if we're going by action game, that is an action game. I would I would argue that sometimes it's not about what's the newest and most innovative. It's the one that does the job the best. Does that make sense? Yes. Because like. All right, like Back to the Future is not the first time travel story, but it is the time travel story that does it the best. But, but what it? But I think it's both. I think it's got to do it. It it could be very innovative and do it really good, uh-huh. or just do something that's been done a million times but do it the best, right. like an iPhone. Yes. <laughs> so does Bayonetta three take the? What even is that? Hack and slash third person uh, action? I believe the the technical term is spectacle fighter. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> Does it take that formula and do it the best? Maybe. It really doesn't look like it does. Right. Uh, apparently that game was supposed to be open world and it uh, they changed it like midway through development. So a lot of levels are just big and empty. <laughs> they should have done that with Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, again, we're, we're, we're on action game. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Adventure's the one that's, a, that's. Well, next annoying. is best action adventure. Ne- okay. And I that, hate that this. one, that one's a God of War. That's okay. So that category is usually reserved for whatever doesn't win game of the year. Yeah. Uh, so I so, guess it makes sense. Yeah. But not really. Uh, Elden Ring won best role playing game. Uh, Multiverse is one best fighting game, which is surprising to me. That is dumb. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? There wasn't a lot of fighting games. True. And they, there was so little they had to put Sifu yeah. in best fighting game. Uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land won best family game. Uh, Gran Turismo Seven won best sports or Hold racing on a second. game. Best family game. We said that Lego Star Wars was probably the best family game. Yeah. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. It's a. It's. The best game in this list. Right. But it's not really a family game. Yeah, it's a a single player game, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's now we're questioning what is a family game, you know? Yeah. If it's just a game that a kid could play, then Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Right. Anyway. Uh, Grand Turismo 7, best sports or racing game. Uh, And I kind of wanted Ollie Ollie World, but that's fine. Um, 
Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope won Best Simmer Strategy Game. Interesting, because it's up against Dune Spice Wars. Yeah, and a Total War Warhammer. Mm-hmm. Um, Splatoon 3 won Best Multiplayer Game. So, take that, Call of Duty. Uh, Stray won Best Debut Indie Game. Again, Neon White and Tunic and Vampire Survivors is on this list. Good. Okay. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. So, I think neon white should win every category that it's in right but best debut indie game maybe vampire survivors yeah i i I think neon white should have won best indie game period right but debut indie probably vampires yeah uh most anticipated game zelda tears of the kingdom no surprise there yeah Um, that was very obvious that that got it that got like a like almost a standing ovation when they yeah they said read that name uh best adaptation uh arcane Based on League of Legends. I believe that. Yes. That, that got a lot. Yeah, of, that was like surprisingly like well-reviewed and popular when it came out. I mean, um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, that anime was so good to revive the game to a mm-hmm. certain extent. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, that's like a very, that's like a very profitable movie. Um, Uncharted did not have a chance in hell of winning this. Yeah, the movie was but that was there because it's a Sony thing. Yes, but also because there probably wasn't a lot of adaptations. Players' choice, sorry, players' voice, and Jeff Keighley specifically mentioned after they eliminated all the bots. Genshin Impact won. Now, yes, now <laughs> I guarantee to you, even with all the bots removed, Sonic Frontier still won. They had to change it because they didn't want to embarrass themselves. I'm calling conspiracy. Well, well, I I think that he said that because there were a lot of bots voting for Genshin Impact. Really? So you... he said that to be like, we checked, we already looked, and even with all of the bots taken out, it's still Genshin Impact. So, but the big controversy here is that I think Genshin Impact was giving away in-game items for people who voted for them. Mm, that's even worse. Yes. Yeah. But but that so that means time, so that means there was a partnership with the Game Awards, so they had to let it win. They couldn't let Sonic well, Frontiers well, win. I don't think it benefited <laughs> the Game Awards at all. I think it's just they saw that they were being nominated. And they're like, hey guys, if you vote for us, we'll give you yeah some waifus, you know. But Sonic Frontiers should have given away some in-game items. <laughs> There's in-game items. There is, there are a lot of should've in-game given items. Away some yeah. waifus. Uh I'm calling. I'm calling conspiracy. Jeff Keeley, you're you're on notice. Uh, I I'm I'm glad. I would have given that either to Genshin or Sonic Frontiers. I kind of would have rather Sonic Frontiers yeah. for the meme, but uh, whatever. Uh, and then we got the esports stuff. Valorant won best esports game. Uh, f- that's fine. Yeah, that's a great esports game. Uh. F- Jacob Ye Whit- uh, Whitaker is the esports athlete. Now, this is, shouldn't La- be a surprise. I know zero people in the yeah. best esports category. Loud is the best esports team. Um, BZKA is the best esports coach. Uh, the League of Legends World Championship was the event. And Ludwig is content creator of the year. Uh, yes. I, I, I voted, we voted for Nebelian, I think. Yes. <laughs> uh, but Ludwig was also great. He did this slap box, not slap boxing chess boxing event like yes. two days ago or yesterday or something mm-hmm. uh that was crazy uh and that's it that's game boards yes uh stupid yeah i i'm not uh happy with a lot disappointing of i mean i'm uh, happy elden ring won game of the year i was hoping that it would uh out of out of the nominations at least yeah um, i mean but it was it was predictable it was boring it was you know it, yeah. it, it's just a standard like you know circle jerk award show congratulations this is the oscars of gaming but most of the reason people watch and watch such a spectacle is because of the big announcement yes and there were a lot of announcements there were a lot of big announcements as great as it could have been i mean the biggest deal to me i mean i'm sure we'll go through it but the biggest deal to me was they had a lot of mario footage from the movie yeah that was like that was like 30 seconds it's like almost an entire scene well they had a whole new like trailer yeah and also like 30 seconds of a clip it was like crazy yeah they had a, they, they had a, a lot yeah uh do we have we have a lot of new notifications no we don't do we have nothing right. okay right. just jump right into all it. all right we'll jump right into it we got uh coming to all systems is hellboy web of weird this is awesome this, this looks, looks awesome. really good yes yeah. um 
I it's it's cell shaded, so it looks much more like the Mike Mignola artwork from the comics. Um, I just hope this breaks the cycle of bad Hellboy games because we've had two Hellboy games: Asylum Seeker on PS One and um, was it Weapons of Destruction on Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty and PS Three. And both of those are trash. Mm -hmm. Even the one on 360 and PS3 had the backing of Del Toro and Ron Perlman as Hellboy and the cast of the movie in it. And it was shit. Mm -hmm. I can't really tell what type of game this is because at one point it's completely 2D. And then yeah. it, go, it does like a God of War, exactly a God of War camera angle. Yeah. Uh, it's just they do such a great job with the uh, uh, Mignola art style. Yeah. So I'm trying to see. I it's... um. I don't want to say it's like a roguelike type game, but I remember seeing that somewhere in like one of the descriptions of it. And I don't see how you can make a roguelike like this, you know? Yeah. It, I mean, some of the gameplay, uh, if this is even gameplay, yeah. kind of looks exactly like God of War. So yeah. I'm down for that. And, you know, that's probably the best way to adapt Hellboy. Just do God of War. Uh, Among Us Hide and Seek was also revealed. It's a hide and seek uh, mode to Among Us. Uh, Street Fighter Six did get a release date June second next year. Oh, yeah. okay, that's a long time. Yes, that's a long time. Uh, and, and there's a lot of uh, wacky characters. Yeah, they show off a lot characters. of new characters, a lot of returning characters. Uh, I keep forgetting this is being made in the Resident Evil engine. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hades two. Uh, Super Giant's first sequel. This is a big Hades. deal. Yes. When we saw this, we were like, oh, this is Super Giant. But then it's like, but it can't be Hades. Yeah. Because they already did that and they never do sequels. Yeah. And they're doing a sequel. I guess they decided Hades was too big not yeah. to do a sequel. And also, uh, maybe they have a good idea. For yeah. So. Maybe. So that's fun. Uh, Judas, which is basically just Bioshock again. There were four Bioshock games. Yes. Or games that were basically just Bioshock. But this one is by the Bioshock creators. Yes. So if there's any Bioshock game to look for, this is the Bioshock game to look for. Yes. Uh, it does Wait, look good. Oh, this just in. Game Pass replied to me on Twitter. Oh, boy. And I didn't even tweet it, though. <laughs> I have to I have to go. Oh, I, I got to see this. What the fuck? What? They wrote, hap okay, so I, t I tweeted this picture of the Xboxes, uh -huh. and Xbox, and it's actually Xbox, yeah. wrote, happy little consoles. Oh, and Bob put Ross. Bob Ross in my picture. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man. What the hell? That's fun. That is fun. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to quote it. Okay, so we got, yeah, Judas looks good. I would definitely play that. Uh, Bayonetta Origins, um, Cereza and the Lost Demon. This is a prequel game to the Bayonetta series. Uh, it is not an action game. It's like some weird isometric RPG type game. You tell me what you think about this, because I felt like a crazy person. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what do you think of this? I mean, it's not... It's not my cup of tea. It doesn't look like a game I would play. It also doesn't look like she does anything in the game. You know? Yeah, because there's like a monster that yeah. like fights with you. I can't tell what type of game it is. Yeah. Because it seemed like a platformer for a little bit of it. Yeah. I think this looks pretty good. I, I Yeah? Yeah, I don't... I think this is... I, I like the idea. It looks like you summon... Yeah, it looks like yeah. you summon some creature to fight for you. I like the idea of taking an IP like Bayonetta that has had the same game or yeah. three games and do a wacky with it. Yeah, like I'm not against that. I'm not against it having a weird art style or a weird type of gameplay. I just, I don't know what type of game this is and I don't think it's a game I would like. It reminds me of Okami. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm a little, you know, honestly, more interested in this than I was in any mainline Bayonetta. Right. Well, it's coming March 17th okay. of next year. So very soon. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know more about how the yeah. game is actually played. I'd like it if it was more of like a third person yeah. platformer type situation. But uh, I, I'm i not too sure it is. Because yeah. again, we haven't actually seen her do anything. Yeah. Uh, next is Earthblade, the next game from the Celeste creator, Extremely Okay. 
Uh, that's coming out in 2024. I'm very excited about this. Yes. I'm not sure how much combat I need in my Celeste because this looks like there's like yeah actual combat, kind of like a Hollow Knight type deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure we need that. So, uh, I mean, it looks really good. Yeah. I'm happy to have more Celeste. Uh, and I'm sure it'll at least be a fraction of as good as Celeste. Yes. And Celeste was phenomenal. So I'm sure mm-hmm. I'll enjoy this. Uh, next is Death Stranding 2. Now this I'm very excited for, even though I barely played any of the first one. I haven't played a, uh, a minute of the first one. I have not watched this trailer yet because I don't have the energy for it. <laughs> it's it's a long trailer and I just, I'm not in the mood for your bullshit right now, Kojima. <laughs> it looks phenomenal. Oh, I'm sure it looks great. I, I was watching it and I was like, this guy needs to just make a movie already. Because it's, he, it's shot beautifully. It's so clear he wants to make a movie. Yeah. But like he has fallen into the trap of becoming a game designer. So he has to make a game. There's the I said it after this one shot where it, the, the, the shot is, is constrained by the, 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 the perspective of a wide angle lens. Yeah. And it's like, you're in a video game. You yeah. You don't need to have the constraints of a camera, yeah. but you're doing that. Mm-hmm. So it looks incredible. Yeah. Uh, and it makes me need to finish the first. I'm just going to buy it on fucking Steam. There you go. Replaying it. Uh, Tekken 8 gameplay. Uh, that was cool. Do you like Tekken? Yeah, I'm not. I think I blacked out during this. <laughs> I don't remember this at all. Tekken is one of those games where, like, I know I played a Tekken and I liked it, but if you were to ask me the difference between, like, Tekken, I mean, aside from graphically, like, Tekken 1 and Tekken 7, I would not be able to tell you the difference. I can tell you the difference between Tekken and Tekken Tag Tournament, because in Tag Tournament, there's two of you. (laughs) Diablo 4 gets a release date June 6th next year. That was a cool reveal. That was a cool reveal. They had What's-Her-Face singing. Halsey. Halsey. That was cool. Uh, we got a new, we got a clip from the Super Mario Brothers movie. That was kind of a huge deal. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was like loaded with references to the games, the background music and stuff. Uh, a lot more of what you love, which is Mario not knowing what he's doing. So here's the thing about that. Yes, it's showing Mario not knowing what he's doing. Uh, where like, you know, he goes into the pipe and he's just banged around a lot. Yeah. What bothers me more is is not is actually not Mario not knowing what he's doing. But it's an example, it's a subtle example, but it's an example of like that type of animated movie that I'm talking about where like like every two minutes it's a stupid joke to try and like trick the kids into liking the movie. Mm-hmm. Like having like having them bang around the pipe, having them like, you know, not being a good platformer or anything like that. Like that's just a, you know, a visual noise to distract the kids. Yeah. You know, that's... I'm more concerned about that than I am about Mario not being a good platformer. It's all character like antics, like like exactly, yeah, antics. It, it, it's it's just it's just moments just slapped exactly. together, exactly, yeah. And they're hoping that the more they slap together, the more have the chance of catching in a child's brain. Yes, because you never know what's actually gonna take. Yeah. So, so you just give them rapid fire as many yeah. as you can, and eventually, a couple yeah, make of them everything take. silly, yeah, so that you have their attention. Meanwhile, the adults in the audience are just sitting there going, "Like, just kill me." Yeah. I, well, what's an example of a kids' animated movie that does that well? It does that well? Yeah, or it doesn't do it at all, but it's still a kids' movie. Most Pixar movies don't do that at all. Okay, but they're still like family friendly. Like, they're still good movies. I mean, I've at this point I've seen most Disney movies. Thanks, kids. So <laughs> like a thousand times, like so know like the difference. Like Moana doesn't do like Moana has comic relief characters. Moana is pretty quick. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, but but, yeah, but you're they're, right. they're not reliant on the comic relief characters. Right, you're right. You know, they'll have like a joke. It's like the way Marvel does it. There's a joke, but like a, the action around it isn't sacrificed. By right, it. I understand. Uh, yeah, but but I, I would say the 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 Pixar movies are kind of uh uh falling victim to the gen z edit like just yeah just shit going on just yeah over and know. over again but also marvel has been catching that too mar i haven't seen god the of la- war the last marvel movie i saw was spider-man <laughs> and 
that was also very fast. Yeah, I I didn't see uh, God of War, Lo- not God of War, Thor: Love and Thunder yet. I heard that's the worst defender of it. Really? Just like the whole everything is a joke. Oh, okay. And that's especially in like movies like that where if you make everything a joke, then nothing is serious, and you don't take the stakes seriously. Right. right. That's a problem. Right. Okay. Anyway, uh, Crash Team Rumble. This yeah. was very confusing. It was. It was also like I feel like heartbreaking for a lot of people because like they like the Crash Twitter account teased the game, so everyone just assumed Crash Five, and then we got this. Well, and then we got the Crash Bandicoot mascot coming. Down. Yes. And then there was like a weird like uh, Discord call he made with like other members. Yeah. And they pretended not to hear him or they were muted and didn't pick up. And then they just showed the trailer. Yeah. And it was like, what was the point of that part? It didn't... Sh- what was it supposed to show? They were, tra- they were muted. They were trying to recapture that, like, those Crash commercials from the 90s where he was just, like, walk into, like, the Nintendo offices and be like, yo, Crash Bandicoot! Yeah, except he, his face wasn't <laughs> yeah. showing. That's the whole... That was, that was the whole the, funny yeah. part is that it's just a guy. Yeah. But... Yeah, and then everyone was expecting a big time like Crash Bandicoot reveal. Yeah, and no. instead we got this game. We got to get a spinoff game that we. The trailer doesn't explain what it is because it looks like Fortnite. It looks like that uh, that Rumble versus game. Yeah, it looks like uh, it uh, looks like a MOBA. At it looks some like points. a MOBA. Yeah. It's very confusing. Yeah. And I still don't know what it is. Crash Bandicoot returns in a new multiplayer action game from from developer Toys for Bob. Hello, how you doing? It's called Crash Team Rumble. Here is the gist. Players will beat each other up as they fight for Wumpa Fruit. Okay. It's it's expected out on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. Yeah, I don't know. Is it a Battle Royale? Is it a MOBA? What is it? It's, um... There's NPCs, it looks like. Or or are there? I don't know. (laughs) Huh. Anyway... Cyberpunk 20, uh, 2077 DLC Phantom Liberty teased. Uh, Idris Elba is in it. So you will buy it now because you, there's a celebrity that we all like in the game. Yeah, that's cool. Um, this will be Idris's second greatest video game performance. First one being, of course, Knuckles. Sure, good point. <laughs> uh, this was a huge deal. Yes. Armored Core. Armored Core, Fires of Rubicon 6. Uh, this is from software rebooting their Armored Core series. Uh, which hasn't seen a new entry since a Verdict Day in 2013. I didn't know From Software did Armored Core games. Yes. At first, I was like, From Software making an Armored Core game? It might actually be good. And then I realized <laughs> they made all of them. Yes. And I was like, oh, no, never mind. People forget, like, From Software has a wild history of, like, games before they made Demon's Souls. Right. You know, they made that Metal Wolf Chaos game. The game they Xbox they did? Game. Yeah, they made that. Oh, my yeah. fucking God. <laughs> So I would love to play an Armored Core game yeah. that plays like uh, Elden Ring. That would be interesting. That would be yeah. really cool. I, Unfortunately, yeah. Armored Core games are purposely clunky and weird. Yeah, because you know? you're you're piloting a huge mech. Yeah, the controls are very strange because it's supposed to feel like every move yeah. is mechanical and, and deliberate. So uh, and complex. Yeah. So. I don't know if I would enjoy this. I, I need a demo to see how it actually physically plays. I'm trying to find. I know, like, from software on some like wacky ass games. I mean, Metal Wolf Chaos. Yeah, that's like one the of the wackiest games yeah. of all time. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is Final Fantasy 16 release date, June 22nd, as a PlayStation exclusive, at least for like a year, I think. There's there was some weird discourse online about, and that was it. Oh, that was it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, there's also a uh, Forspoken demo. That oh, yes. Terrible things. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to try that myself yeah. because I've been talking shit about that game. There was some discourse online about this uh, Final Fantasy situation, about it being a PlayStation exclusive. I believe it's a PlayStation exclusive. It's a timed exclusive. Right. It's not It's not permanently exclusive. It, so did PlayStation buy Square? Or no. Or is that all speculation? That's all speculation. Okay. Um, let me just see. If it'll tell me when the I remember we talked about when the deal was going to be up on this show, but I don't remember mm-hmm. how long it was going to be for. Uh, schedule for Taya. Yeah, it's a timed exclusive for six months. 
Yeah, so in six months, that? it'll come out to Xbox. How do we know that? We I we reported on it like. Yeah, but who? Uh, what was the source on that? I remember. I remember this was like a weird thing. Yeah, it was a very strange I don't thing. Uh, it's gonna have a uh, high age rating. It's gonna be rated M in America. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, M Skelton says y'all ain't even gonna talk about Bill Clinton. There's a guy at the end yeah. who crashed the Game Awards. Some like 15 year old kid. Yeah, he like, wanted to thank his uh, Orthodox rabbi, Bill Clinton. <laughs> he snuck up with uh, the Elden Ring guys who won yeah. Game of the Year, and uh, right when it end- right when they were walking off, he like stole the mic and started yeah uh, talking, and they cut back to him. It was very stupid. Yeah, it's very strange, very weird, very stupid. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah obviously a troll and he's like try i think he's a twitch streamer and he's just trying yeah. to like you know get a get a get a mic and he was on like destiny's mm-hmm. stream the other day just being weird and stupid like a 15 year old kind of yeah. weird cringy humor yeah anyway um so that was it that was the game awards uh notably absent in all of this microsoft now one reveal from their 20 some odd studios, which, you know, is just on top of a year where they didn't release anything. <laughs> it's a So did they is that because they have nothing? So so we're gonna talk more about Microsoft versus Sony because yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a on. lot, yeah. It's it's just they're in such a weird place. Mm-hmm. They have all these studios. Yeah. They have they're obviously all working on something. We know that like you know there's a perfect dark game coming we know there's so there's a new forza coming we know starfield's coming we know redfall is coming we know uh f- we know there's an indiana jones game from bethesda coming we know that they're working on stuff they're not showing us stuff they're not giving us updates to the stuff that we all, that we know is in development they're bizarrely quiet yeah. And it just makes you wonder, like, what's going on? Yes, we know you're focusing on Game Pass, but you need games for Game Pass. Where are the games you're making? You spent God knows how much money buying up all these studios. Well, that's, I think their plan is to just, other people will make the games. We'll but they buy them. <laughs> okay, you buy them. You even make studios specifically to make certain games, and they're not releasing the games. They put a lot of stock into this Activision acquisition. They're, because if they bought that, that's like checkmate. Yeah. But uh it might it might it might not happen. Yeah. <laughs> they might have put too much stock in it and it's it might just not happen. Um also again there's a lot of conversation about this uh, Microsoft versus Sony situation. Yeah. Sony is very upset about that act, act Activision acquisition. Yeah. And act and Sony has been doing these non-competes with people where instead of buying exclusivity they're buying hey don't work with microsoft yeah which is Is a form of exclusivity now is it possible that the game awards has such close ties to sony sony is like we'll announce some games don't show any microsoft stuff here's the thing so the game awards were in the microsoft theater and phil spencer was in the audience yes and they just cut to him. They cut to him a couple times, times yeah. yeah. So if they were such in bed with Sony, why would they keep cutting back to Phil Spencer? Yeah. That's the only thing. Yeah. I mean, the only thing is that is is if they're saying don't show any new Microsoft releases. Yeah. Like don't you don't get any trailers. I don't know how the trailers work. Like, is it a mutual understanding? Are people paying to for a spot? Oh yeah, they're paying for a spot. Because, like, also, Jeff Keighley kind of wants the... He's not going to get views yeah. unless they show a bunch of nice trailers. Yeah. So, it, you know, when when an actor goes on to, like, a talk show to talk about a new movie, mm-hmm. like, the... the It's kind of just a mutual understanding. Like, yeah. Like, like the, pe- the talk show knows people are going to watch for the for the actor... Yeah, and the movie studio is like we want him to go on and promote the movie. Yeah, yeah, to promote the movie. 
So is it that kind of a deal? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I, I definitely think there's like there's money being exchanged because mm-hmm. it's basically an advertisement. They're advertising. Well, that's right. ad revenue. I mean, the Game Awards, the whole thing is an advertisement. Yeah. And for some reason, we're like, yeah! Yeah, commercials! <laughs> Advertise to me! So, I don't... I think it's just the simple explanation. Like, they had nothing. They had nothing to show, which is embarrassing. I think that's the most... That's the easiest answer. Because yeah. they haven't had anything for a long time. Uh, often, the easiest answer is the answer. Yes. Um... How are we doing on notifications? We got Razzle Jazzle with two gifted subs. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Um, no Bananas who says, with the merger going on, I think they're trying not to flex right now. News came out. Uh, they, maybe they're trying to lay low. Yeah. News came out about how they want to allow PlayStation to put... Co- well, okay. Hold on. We're getting there. Uh, hey, it's the next article. Here it is. Oh, here we go. So, out of nowhere... Uh, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, uh, just tweets, Microsoft has entered a 10-year commitment to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo following the merger of Microsoft and Activision Blizzard King. Microsoft is committed to helping bring more games to more people, however they choose to play. Uh, Subtweet, I am also pleased to confirm that Microsoft has committed to continue to offer Call of Duty on Steam simultaneously to Xbox after we've closed the merger with Activision Blizzard King. So that's... A huge deal for multiple reasons. Yes. One, I've always wanted Call of Duty, specifically Warzone on the Switch. Everybody wanted that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, however, people are still speculating this means Call of Duty Mobile or Warzone Mobile. True. Uh, which is also possible. Yeah. However, Call of Duty on Steam, now we're talking. Because that means yeah. I can get Call of Duty, whatever it is, on my Steam Deck. Yeah. Or on one of these other fucking devices. Because you you, you can't... I mean, you can play Call of Duty on, like, a Windows device. Yeah. Um, but you can't... Uh, another interesting thing that I tweeted right when I saw this was that people were speculating, does this mean we're going to get a full Call of Duty game? Is it going to be via streaming? What's mm-hmm. happening? Call of Duty isn't available streaming anywhere. Right. You can't get it on Stadia, Luna... The you can't old... get anything on Stadia anymore. Well, it's true. <laughs> The only streaming services that's available are streaming services where you basically rent a server that is a gaming computer. Yeah. You know, if, where it's running somewhere. You can't actually stream it like you can on like a Game Pass or something. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if Microsoft acquires Call of Duty, I'm sure it will come to Game Pass streaming. Mm-hmm. But I don't think this would mean it's coming to Switch via streaming. I think this they're going to figure out how to fucking put the damn thing on a Switch. Yeah. Uh, so th- I, this is very exciting news. Yes. However, it's probably just so that they can prove that they're not trying to monopolize. Yeah, they're basically going, look, Nintendo agreed. Yeah. You know, why can't you, Sony? Yeah, look, we're playing fair with everybody. Yeah, we're playing we'll fair with our best friends, Nintendo. Now, now I'm somehow... I, I, I know a, a major corporation and buying another major corporation is probably not a good idea. Yeah. Just in, just in general. Just in general, it's probably bad yeah. for, for the world. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason... I'm on Microsoft side because I know if they buy call of, if they buy Activision, it's yeah. better for me as a consumer. Yeah. I will enjoy the product more. And yeah. It'll be easier for me to play these games. Uh, in a follow up to this, cause they also said that they're going to keep it on steam of uh, Gabe Newell, the valve CEO said, we're happy that Microsoft wants to continue using steam to reach customers with call of duty when their Activision acquisition closes. He said when he knows this is happening. (laughs) Microsoft has been on Steam for a long time and we take it as a signal that they are happy with gamers reception to that and the work we are doing. Our job is to keep building valuable features, not only for Microsoft, but all Steam customers and partners. Uh, He goes on to explain that Microsoft even sent a draft of a long term community uh, to keep Call of Duty on Steam on the Steam platform, but clarifies that there was no need to do so. Newell says that Valve doesn't believe in requiring any partner to have a formal agreement that essentially locks them into shipping games on Steam. Newell also knows that Phil Spencer and the Xbox team have always followed through on their commitments and he trusts their intentions. Additionally, Newell believes that Microsoft has the motivation to put Call of Duty on platforms and devices that players want to be on. 
I agree with that, but it's hard to take his word because Steam and like Valve isn't a thing without Microsoft. True. Their whole business wouldn't exist yeah. if Microsoft ceased to exist. Mm-hmm. So of course they're gonna be favorable to to, to Microsoft. Yeah. Uh sent a dra- a long term co- community to keep Sent a draft for they, a long. They term. sent a like a, a that's word of poorly. They basically sent a contract over. Okay, it's like this is what we want to do. Uh, please review it and get back to us. Doesn't and, believe in requiring any partner to have a formal agreement that yeah. essentially locks them into shipping games on Steam. That's very interesting. Yeah, they were like, "No, nah, we're good. No, nah, just, just 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 do it if you yeah. want or don't do it." That's very strange. Yeah, that's crazy. They could have had a. They could have had them legally bound to do this. Yeah. But they, but they were like, nah. Nah, we're, we're cool, man. Yeah, we take your word yeah. for it. That's crazy. That's kind of a flex. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's fast. Yeah, it's, it, this is all a thing is fascinating. How, mm. you know, Microsoft is bending over backwards to like alleviate fears with like, not just Sony, but like with the governments of the world. Yes. This is not going to be a problem. <laughs> and it's also interesting because like, it's only for Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Like Sony clearly does not give a shit about any of the blizzard games they don't give a shit about uh crash bandicoot and spyro for some stupid reason you know original like you know the mascots for the playstation one uh the tony hawk series which was synonymous with playstation back in the day yeah you know uh f- yeah it's just call of duty um and reportedly they offered that 10-year deal to playstation yes uh not only that uh, as Microsoft's attempts to buy the beleaguered uh, publisher Activision Blizzard start to hit some serious roadblocks, the software giant is being forced to make some concessions in an attempt to seal the deal. Uh, one of those is a series of promises to rival platform holders that, should Microsoft be successful with its purchase, the top selling Call of Duty series will remain on their systems for the next 10 years at least. Uh, yeah, we talked about uh, Nintendo and Sony. Uh, and Sony's still backing off on it. Uh, but in a new report from Bloomberg says that in addition to promising Call of Duty games will remain on PlayStation for at least the next decade as standalone retail releases, as well as arriving on the same day as they did on other platforms, Microsoft also told Sony that the series could be offered on the subscription service PlayStation Plus. I want to know. I, I need to know. I need to see these documents. Yeah. Because <laughs> What about these deals? I mean, this because this is coming from Microsoft's mouth. Yeah, Microsoft is saying we all we tried and they didn't want it. Yeah, I need to see exactly what they offered <laughs> because obviously this this has to be there has to have been something in this deal that isn't okay with PlayStation. Right? Why would they just refuse? Well, is I, it because I, they really think they could convince the FTC that the deal is is bad if they don't? take these 10 year deals so here here's the here's here's what i heard it's not it hasn't come up in like any like the official documents but a big thing um that is going against microsoft right now is starfield okay because that was being made by bethesda before microsoft bought uh bethesda okay and when they finally revealed the release date for for Starfield, Microsoft said this is going to be an exclusive. Even though previous Bethesda games were not, right? Even though Microsoft was honoring all contracts uh, for games to be released on PlayStation that were supposed to be like Death, um, Ghostwire Tokyo, like Death Loop, um, and so and the the new game, the new IP, Microsoft said no. This is going to be an Xbox exclusive. Okay, interesting. So that I think is a big sticking point right now because that proves history uh, and a pattern that once Microsoft bought a studio, their games became exclusive. Right. I, I mean, we don't know the long term effects of Microsoft buying a studio. Right. But that was the first one that they decided to close off. Right, because there was a lot. I guess the other ones had long-standing deals, like yeah. Deathloop. Like Deathloop was a PlayStation yeah. title, and and they were bought in the middle of like them launching Deathloop. Yeah. Uh, 
Microsoft seems pretty good at honoring the commitments they have, but I guess they're legally bound to do that anyway. Yes. Uh, so I don't know. I yeah. Mean, I mean, this is them trying to... That's why I'm very interested to see exactly what this deal is yeah. because they seem totally fine with giving Call of Duty to other platforms. Yeah. And I don't blame them. I mean, Call of Duty is one of the biggest IPs in the world. Yeah. And not a lot of people have Xboxes. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's even interesting they're willing to go as far as say like you can put it in PlayStation Plus if you want. We will give it to you in your in your Game Pass competitor. Yeah, but that there's no way they're like you can just do it here, have have fun. There has to have been like give us some money and you could do it, you know? I'm sure there is. I'm yeah. sure I'm maybe they're even like we'll take less money for it. Just yeah. let us. I'm sure I need to yeah. I need to know exactly what's going on with this deal. Yeah. Because why would Sony say no? I think a large reason why they would say no is because they're trying to convince the FTC that the deal is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, you know, they're Sony's major competitor now owning the biggest game, uh, franchise in video games. Like mm. that's a big deal. You know, that could very well mean, okay, they're committing call of duty to PlayStation, but what about the next call of duty? Like, and what, what happens when that 10, those 10 years are up? Are they going to, you know, continue? I think we talked about it last week where we said that Microsoft was trying to uh no Sony was trying to say that uh that Microsoft was trying to make them into Nintendo. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh and now here Microsoft is being like, sure, Nintendo, here's 10 yeah. years of Call of Duty. <laughs> uh so did we even mention that the deal is blocked in 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 the UK? I don't think we did. Well, it's under investigation. I think they just didn't they make the decision. Well, they made the decision to investigate, so it's not going forward because uh, in the UK they're investigating it, and over here in America the FTC. Everyone's saying that FTC is suing Microsoft. Yeah, that's this is what I heard. This is what I heard. So it's not exactly like suing in the traditional sense. They're also investigating. Oh, because, I thought they straight up blocked it. No, they didn't block okay. it. They're investigating. Because what they're trying to do is they want to see, they want to see for sure is it is does this create a monopoly? Are you removing right. competition? Is Microsoft removing their competition? Mm -hmm. And you know, whether or not Activision is the competition of Microsoft, not necessarily Sony. That's an interesting because, argument. Because before, like with Bethesda. You know, Microsoft was console maker and Bethesda made games for the console. That's not really competition. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But now Microsoft already has all of these studios mm -hmm. and now they're removing the biggest studio, you know, from the playing field. Does that shift the balance towards eliminating competition? Right. That's what they're investigating. So it's a, it's a, just a standard regulation. Yeah. Thing. I mean, it's a little bit more extreme than usual. Mm -hmm. Um, just given the circumstances, but well, it reminds me of like uh, you know the big uh, who was AT and T merger with Time Warner or something. Yeah, when AT and T merged with Time Warner, yeah. And <laughs> this also happened, I think, back in the day with telephone companies. They the way ar they got blocked, and the way around it was they just broke them up. Yeah. Well, into different companies. Well, with and just bought the individual companies. <laughs> I remember with eight. Well, the AT and T Time Warner deal wasn't that long ago. It was only like 2018 or something. And part of the deal was Trump wanted them to sell CNN because CNN was not a pro-Trump network. Okay. They they did not sell CNN and they went through anyway. Uh, but then AT and T sold Time Warner to Discovery because they lost a lot of money with the HBO Max deal. Okay. And now they're trying to fix Warner Brothers by just like canceling everything. But so. many, many years ago, they just broke up the phone companies. Yeah. They were just like, phone companies are too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break them up. And they and broke them up. But that didn't really do anything. Yeah. You know? They yeah. were just under the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. So that could happen here. Yeah. You just break them up. Yeah. And then just, they're, still, so, they're still Microsoft, you know, puppets, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, they, they could also cut off the backfire. They could break up the studios. And then, you know, Sony can snag one and Nintendo can snag one and True. EA can snag one. Can you imagine if EA bought Infinity Ward? And they'd be like, would, finally, finally, Battlefield will be good. That would suck. That would be awful. 
I don't. It's, this whole thing is very interesting. Yeah. I, I think it's also interesting that Microsoft and and Activision are both operating as if this is uh, set in stone. Yeah, like they're both talking as if the deal is is done. Yeah, but uh, and I guess they're in the motion, like it's happening. Yeah, they're doing it. It's and there's probably a shit ton of work that has to be done in order to finalize it. Yeah. Uh, but at any moment, the FTC could be like, no. I remember seeing somewhere that like this deal might not be finished until 2024. Jesus. So Christ. we might get a whole other calendar year with any with without any like concrete like moving forward, just more of this news crap. Yeah. You know, now Sony says that Microsoft will make Call of Duty I don't know dumb. <laughs> I selfishly am for this. Right. Because I like it. I, I like Microsoft. Mm-hmm. I, I like I, I like what's going on with Xbox and Game Pass, and I like Call of Duty. Right. And I want it all to be streamlined. I want my experience to be better. Yeah. You know, as far as capitalism goes, terrible situation. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible, nightmarish situation. Yeah. But Call of Duty is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, any notifications? Courting Acrobat. Thanks for the Prime and. May Peco Peco. Thanks for the prime. Hey guys, if you're just joining us, type in an exclamation point giveaway and you'll be entered into a giveaway. I hope this, th- you know what? I haven't even checked to make sure that that's been working. And it has been. Congratulations. Uh, we'll be pulling that at 10 o'clock tonight. And uh, I previously said that uh, if you're not here with us, uh, if you're watching this podcast, you know, mm-hmm. we'll have some giveaways for you. They fucking pulled out. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. You might have to come here to twitch.tv slash wolf then one of these days where we're live and yeah. uh, get a giveaway that way. Sorry about it. Anyway, uh, Mario Kart 8 Wave DLC. Wave 3 DLC. Wave 3 DLC. Yeah, wave so- Race. They're partnering with Wave Race. <laughs> So the, the the new levels from Mario Kart 8, uh, Booster Course Pass, Wave 3, um, Maple Treeway from Mario Kart Wii, Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 7, Boo Lake from Super Circuit, Boo. Berlin Byways from Mario Kart Tour, Rock Rock Mountain from Mario Kart 7, Peach Gardens from DS, uh, London Loop from Mario Kart Tour, and Merry Mountain from Mario Kart Tour. I don't know any of these friggin' levels. Me neither, and I've played most of these games. I think it's really interesting that they're bringing a Mario Kart tour levels in. Yes. I don't mind that. No. Because uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what I found more interesting, though, not the fact that we're getting all these new levels in DLC. Okay. Um, the next article uh, indicates this is separate, but it's you know the same time frame. Free Mario Kart 8 Deluxe update lets you choose what power-ups appear during your races. Oh, like uh, Smash Brothers. Yes. At its core, Mario Kart is a game about trolling your friends, so what better way to ratchet up the hijinks than by allowing players to decide what power-ups spawn during races? Nintendo has released a free update to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that adds custom item selection for offline versus races and select online modes. Want to be a monster and force blue shells on all of your friends? Go right ahead. It's even possible to set specific items for each team in team races and battles. This is a free update. Uh, This free update is the latest show of support for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a five-year-old re-release of a nearly nine-year-old game. That is cool. I think that's a really fun little mix-up. I'm surprised they didn't do this earlier. Mm Mm-hmm. I am also, I mean, again, I'm surprised that they're supporting Mario Kart 8 so hard this late in its life cycle. I'm also surprised because that's very unlike Nintendo. However, yeah. this game is the most popular game. Yeah, ever. no, absolutely. Uh, I think that would be really interesting to have an all blue shell yeah. match. Uh, I also I also think this screenshot is just gorgeous. Like, I know oh, Mario yeah. Kart 8 is a gorgeous game, but like, try taking a screenshot mid game. Like, this is, this is. Really- oh, yeah. Yeah, hands down. Especially with a bullet bill. Yeah. That's some dev tool shit right there. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, I'm not going to play the game. Yeah. You're not going to get me to do it. Uh, next, Nintendo takes on Did You Know Gaming. This is very sad. This is sad. Did, uh, did you watch this video? I think I did. It was great. I, I'm I'm almost positive I did watch this video. 
Uh, Digital Gaming is apparently the latest victim of Nintendo of America copyright takedown, according to the popular YouTube channel, best known for documenting long-lost video game history. Its recent Heroes of Hyrule video has received a copyright strike. Nintendo has removed our Heroes of Hyrule video from YouTube. This was a journalistic video documenting a game that Retro Studios pitched to Nintendo nearly 20 years ago. This is an attempt by a large corporation to silence whatever journalism they don't like and a slap in the face for video game history preservation. We are exploring all available options to restore this video. Did you know gaming's uh, research revealed Hyrule, Heroes of Hyrule was a styled like Final Fantasy's tactics uh, and would have been focused on three heroes who were tasked with rescuing Link. In the end, Nintendo rejected Retro's pitch before any gameplay prototypes could be completed. This isn't the first time we've seen copyright strikes like this, and there's nothing stopping companies from issuing copyright claims in these sorts of scenarios. Last week, Did You Know Gaming released a video about another long-lost retro pitch known yes. as Metroid Tactics. You can learn more about that project and also Heroes of Hyrule in, uh, in our previous coverage. Okay, I didn't know Metroid Tactics. I knew about anything. that. I definitely saw that they pitched Metroid Tactics and Nintendo said no. Um... There is no reason for Nintendo to have gone after this. This does not harm them in any way, shape, or form. It is not a neg it wasn't a negative video. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a they didn't really show any like you know gameplay footage or anything. It was just a video talking about a Nintendo game that did not get released. Yeah. And that they're never going to make. I mean Maybe they don't want people. Maybe they want to pick it apart for ideas, and, and yeah. Or maybe th what's happening is they're just trying to set a precedent so that yeah. other people who uh, work for them aren't going to try to leak any stuff that's in development or was in development in the past. Yeah. Uh, when I saw this video, I was like, "Wow, they got a lot of like insider information that yeah. Nintendo is not going to be happy about." Yeah. I mean, it's a third. Well. Second party studio? What's retro? Second party? I think they're first party. First party? I think they're owned by Nintendo completely. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, that's then that's a huge deal. Yeah. And retro to talk that much about it. But it was it you watch the video and you're like, this is a game that was never gonna be. Yeah. They, they even say in it, they're like the guy who was talking was like, it wasn't a fun game. Like the like the gameplay had to change like a lot. It, it was it, it was a great idea. Because like the idea, you follow Sheik the whole yeah. the game follows yeah, yeah. Sheik, um, and it seemed really like a really cool game story wise, but yeah. the actual gameplay seemed very bad. It was like a weird rhythm type situation with the Wiimote. Um and it like didn't work right. The guy was saying, but uh, maybe it just makes I don't know. Maybe they think it makes them look bad because they, it's, yeah. it's a failure, but. Uh, I don't know. They they very much they still have like that like secret, you know, of do not pay no attention to the man behind the curtain mentality where like if you know how the games are made, then like that ruins the magic for you. Mm -hmm. And like it doesn't like all movies have like behind the scenes documentaries on their DVDs and like if you buy it on iTunes, like that's a thing. People like to see how the yeah. sausage is made sometimes. I love seeing how the sausage is made. Yeah. I like, I mean, I watched the video. It was a very popular exactly. video. Yeah. I was very interested in, in this game that was never going to be made. Um, did you read their, uh, did you know gaming's uh, statement? Uh, I did not read their statement. I'll read it. Mm -hmm. uh, they tweeted, let Nintendo of America know what you think. And they, there's a picture that says Nintendo has removed our Heroes of Hyrule video from YouTube. This was a journalistic video documenting a game that Retro Studios pitched to Nintendo nearly 20 years ago. This is an attempt by a large corporation to silence whatever journalism they don't like and sl a slap in the face for video game history preservation. We are ex we are exploring all available options to restore the video. I don't know what options they could have. Yeah. But yeah, takedown issued by Nintendo of America. Copyright. On the grounds of copyright. Just the whole video. Not like anything specific. Yes, the whole video. On a one copyright strike. Yeah. If you get multiple strikes, we'll have to disable your account. So it's a, the strike is a big yeah. deal. It's yeah. Not like a, it's not like a claim. Yeah. It's a straight on. Mm -hmm. We want this off now. So that sucks. Because yeah. I'm sure a lot went into making that video. Yeah. Um, hey, maybe this means we'll get the game. <laughs> I doubt it. 
Um, all right, Returnal comes to PC. Yes. Uh, following the confirmation, because let's be honest, we all knew it was coming, Returnal is making the jump to PC, and its PC specs have been detailed, and they have raised a few more eyebrows. Unlike the other big PlayStation releases, it is recommended that you have a colossal 32 gigs of RAM available on your PC to play Returnal at its best potential. For comparison, the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection and Horizon Zero Dawn both recommend having 16 gigs of RAM available. That is the minimum of what Returnal asks for. Meanwhile, God of War only asks for 8 gigs of RAM at its best PC experience. This is a little insane. Yes. Um, well, Horizon Zero Dawn and God of War are PlayStation 4 games. True. So that makes a little more sense. Because right. Returnal is a PlayStation 5 exclusive that probably had zero intentions of being anywhere else. Yeah. Uh but it's like i mean i don't know it's it's i want to say it it feels like an indie game but it's not it is a yeah AAA game but still it's, it's house mark is like a relatively yeah. small team but it is still like a graphically intensive game so the playstation 5 only has 16 gigs of ram yeah it's the minimum so <laughs> they're recommending you have double that so that's because your pc is not the playstation architecture you know, I guess like like the PlayStation is able to have these. It's able to run these games with minimal specs because of the way that everything works together. Yeah. You know, your PC is not that. Your right. PC is going to need to be. Right. Because like powerful. no two PCs are the same. So. Yeah. And, and you have a lot of different third party parts working in conjunction with yeah. you. Meanwhile, PlayStation has everything that is just that is just the minimal it can be that all works perfectly together. Yeah. And then it's developed for that ecosystem. And then you put it on a PC and you're like, now I got to uh, account for all these other yeah. things. Let's just raise the, the Ram so that it could handle yeah. the, the bullshit. And a big reason why Returnal is so power hungry is because of the particles. There's yeah. A lot of particle effects. And I guess the ram is taking the brunt of that i don't know uh while other specifics for returnal have uh currently thin on the ground developer house mark has said the pc version of the game will have a selection of tweaks and upgrades that will ensure players have an experience that is as fluid as possible At the time of this writing there's no release date for returnal's pc debut however it is slated uh to come sometime in early 2023 uh travicon in the chat brings up a good point it's probably you know, PlayStation made a huge deal about the PS5 having an SSD. Yes. And like, or an M.2 one that that's like super fast. Well, it has a specific, it has a specially integrated um, SSD. Mm -hmm. And then like they, they make a big deal about if you're going to get another hard drive, it, uh, another SSD, it needs to be like an uh, NVMe M.2. Right. SSD and whatnot. Now they recommend that you have an SSD for the yes. minimum system requirements, but uh, you're probably not going to have one that's as integrated as a PlayStation Five would be. True, you might, yeah, but you might not, and that's why they're going to recommend a lot more RAM because they're going to put that shit in RAM yeah. instead of just leaving it on the on the SSD. Um. Anyway, so. Uh, I mean, if this is if this is recommending thirty two gigs, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're about to start to enter into the era where, like, you know, in order to play games on PC, you're going to need ridiculously high specs for it, so, and that's kind of sucks because PCs, you know, they're supposed, you know, they're the more readily available systems, and like you're cutting out a whole audience. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm concerned about that RAM situation. I'm concerned about the way that the current gen systems utilize the faster storage versus how a pc does yeah but the pcs could the pc requirements could just start requiring faster storage right you know? well the thing is like both on the xbox series and the ps5 the storage is like specifically integrated yeah into the system itself you really can't do that on pc well you kind of can i mean and you can't do it in the way that the co current gen consoles can but you can yeah. get very close because there are M.2 drives in motherboards now. You can just right. put one in there. And, I guess. And then you're good. But then, like, if 
if your PC has that but mine doesn't, that's going to significantly impact the way yeah, I play. That's going to yeah. start to be part of the system requirements. Yeah. Is, is you got to have an M, an NVMe yeah. drive if you want to play a PlayStation first party game. Yeah. I will say though that uh, the shitty computer that I gave you, yeah, uh, meets these requirements. Oh, good. <laughs> so uh, the minimum requirement is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060. Mm-hmm. You, my friend, got 1070 in there. Nice. Baby. You're good to go. Uh, but the minimum, re- I mean, the recommended is a 2070. So right. I'm sorry about it. That's uh, okay. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I think you have 48 gigabytes of oh, memory in that Okay. Thing. I got to get a smaller case for that thing. It is massive. It is a big boy. Also, there's a, a lot of dust in that. Yes. Thing. Yes, there is. So good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at 1060, I was reading some article and they said that that's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I th- that's a very old card, so I don't. I don't know if it is. I. Th- I think. I mean, we're in. We're. We're. Times moving. You know, yeah. like <laughs> like games are more powerful now. Mm-hmm. Not everything's gonna run on that old machine. Yeah. So anyway, ten seventy is like five. Ten sixty is like five year old. No, 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 no. Ten sixty <laughs> is way more than five years old. I'm gonna try to look that up now. I don't know when I got that ten seventy. Yeah. Uh, release date. I'd be shocked. 2016. Okay. What was? How long ago was 2016? Six years ago. All right. There you go. One more year than what he said. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's not that much yeah. more than that. All right. Uh, we gotta plow through these next ones. Well, I think there's just, oh, uh, just one more. One more. D and D CEO thinks the hobby is under monetized compared to video games. Of course, uh, as reported by Dicebreaker, Hasbro CEO Chris Cox <laughs> and Wizards of the Coast CEO Cynthia Williams are looking to grow the future of Dungeons and Dragons through the the type of reoccurring spending you see in digital games, highlighting the fact that dungeon masters or game masters or players who run the game and control all non-player characters and monsters spend most of the. Ho- Spend the most on the hobby through rule books and digital services. Williams bemoaned the fact that players, uh, those who only play individual characters, aren't just aren't spending enough to play the companies uh, in the company's fantasy world. She described D and D's current state as under monetized. Many who are familiar with this hobby might find these comments somewhat odd, as the world's most popular tabletop role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons has a variety of ways players and game masters can purchase official material and spend money on the game, which has, by Williams' own admission, never been more popular. It's true that purchasing the core rulebooks costs about $100-ish and can provide you with a lifetime of material to play with, but if you want to save money and use your imagination like some kind of monster, a hundred bucks isn't nothing, but it's hardly the amount that say a lifelong gamer is likely to spend on a new video game in a year and many players of video games do spend much more than that just on microtransactions within their favorite titles however some might say that this ability to spend around 60 to 100 bucks and then let your imagination guide you the rest of the way is the appeal of the hobby it's approachable affordable and has a personal unplugged feel to it but then again that doesn't match up with the kinds of spending models we see in digital games so basically, Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast are sad that you they haven't found a way to add DLC and microtransactions to Dungeons and Dragons the way games video games have. I mean, they still have like, uh, did they make a movie? They're they they made a, they're making a new movie now. There's okay. a new movie coming out. Uh, they're owned by Hasbro, so they make like action figures and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different versions of it. There's a strange a Stranger Things specific version of Dungeons and Dragons. Th- th- there's I feel like there's a lot of ways they could have, uh, I don't know, like like strangled their IP. Yeah. Look, look to uh, I mean, Dungeons and Dragons is a massive IP. Yeah. But uh, name one character from Dungeons and Dragons. The only characters I know are from Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like they. All of these other massive IPs are huge because of the characters. Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have that. <laughs> well, no, because the whole point of Dungeons and Dragons is you're the characters. Yeah, you go on this fan- fantastical adventure, and you like run into uh, all these like weird creatures along the way. 
Well, what's the name a character from from Skyrim? Uh, I actually don't know any. The guy, the, the guy that you play. What's his fucking name? They call him. Oh, something. the 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 Dragonborn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. Okay. Make that. Make a guy like that. Well, they. <sighs> what little I know of D and D, like the character classes are like what. Yeah. Yeah. So like the paladin, the knight, the mage, the f- whatnot. But, like, that's applicable to, like, everything, though. Mm -hmm. You know, every, you know, fantasy RPG video game is, if not directly based on Dungeons & Dragons, at least stealing from it. Yeah, and and that's the... This is why, you know, you've got such predatory IP, like, 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 stuff like Nintendo striking down videos. Yeah. Because... Every uh, everyone else is stealing from Dungeons and Dragons, and it's fine because Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have this big recognizable like like these big recognizable characters and stuff. Yeah, and these other companies are taking it and making them recognizable and and, and, yeah. and monetizing that. Dungeons and Dragons, I feel like, could very easily do something like that. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> Dungeons and Dragons is more popular now than it ever has been, like you know, especially because of all the mainstream attention. I feel like, have you ever seen Joe Manganiello's Dungeons and Dragons no. gameplay? Dude goes fucking all out, invites like Tom Morello and Vince Vaughn, like all his celebrity friends. They got like really awesome miniatures and yeah. like tables ha- uh, set up, and so I feel like D and D could license that to like make like really nice game boards yeah. and like miniatures and like all this other crap like that's something they can do if they really want to like monetize it and do dlc what, what they need is a big advertising campaign that just absolutely nails some sort of very recognizable characters right or at least very recognizable iconography. Yeah. Because if they don't have characters, they definitely have iconography. Right. Right. You know, I think it's just hard because, like, how do you make, like, five guys sitting around a table yelling at each other exciting? I mean, people have... Joe Magnell did it. Yeah. I mean, what, what's their... Fa- um, Critical Role. Critical Role, know, yeah. Uh, uh, the College Humor guys have one. Mm-hmm. Like, And they're all wildly successful. Yeah. So, like, do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, hey, that's all the news. Yeah, someone asked my wife if we play D and D, and we thought about it for a minute if we should, and we're just like, that is such a fucking commitment. I would love to. That is such a big commitment. I would love to do, but yeah, no, I would do it for like a a night. I would l- be interested in checking out the original Cyberpunk tabletop RPG because Cyberpunk before it was a buggy game was a tabletop RPG. Right. So I would be interested to see what that was like. Because Johnny Silverhand is in it, and like the characters from oh, the game are in the RPG. Yeah, I just like that world more than a yeah. Cyberpunk is much more interesting. World. I do have a Batman role playing guidebook. Right, maybe I should read that and fa- maybe sick. start playing some fucking Batman. All right, sweet of the week time. Sweet of the week. Sweet of the week. Sweet of the week. Sweet of the week. I almost slipped back into my old role. What happened there? This is okay. We got to we got to go deep. This is a multi-layered yeah. one. Uh, this is Culture Crave tweeted. Elon yeah. Musk confirms that the Twitter character limit will be raised from two hundred and eighty characters to four thousand. That is that that defeats the point of Twitter. Yeah, no, that is a terrible, that is dumb. Move. That oh is my god, very, he... very stupid. I try to be like open minded about like the new Twitter, but like Elon Musk is going to ruin this website. That completely defeats the purpose. That yeah. turns it into Tumblr. Yeah. However, the only the listen, we gotta accept the world is shit. Yes. So this might happen. The only way this could the blow could be softened here is if you have to click to see the rest of the characters. If it's two hundred and eighty characters, then you click and it expands, or you click yeah. and, like a twit longer because it already exists. For yeah. So that's the only way where this is at least a little salvageable. But if I'm scrolling through my timeline and I see 4,000 characters, I'm never going to this fucking yeah. website again. Anyway, uh, that's not the tweet of the week. No. Uh, the reply is just a picture of Christopher <laughs> Judge accepting his award because he talked for 4,000 yeah. hours. And then that's not the tweet of the week either. The tweet of the week is Christopher, Christopher Judge, Judge quote tweeting that with crying laughing emojis and the heart emojis. Uh because he knows. He knows. That he, he knows. He don't did care. not shut up. Yeah. He's okay with it. 
Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you guys while I do an unboxing. How okay. Oh, I got to open up Discord so we can talk to people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast. Yes. Over on YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, I'm opening all the wrong Discord channels. Uh, First one is Wolf Den Dad. Okay. Can you give away the stuff you left in my basement? <laughs> <laughs> no, because some of that stuff is mine. Uh, this 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 week... Uh, what happened? What, what just, what? I clicked something weird. Oh boy. Oh God. I clicked it again. What happened? Did I move something? Yeah, I did. Okay. I didn't know I could do that. Uh, this weekend, uh, our dad made us go through our old trophies. Yes. From when he made us play sports. (laughs) And they're all, of course, participation trophies. Yes. No, no, okay. not one, not one. I came in second place in my Cub Scout Pinewood Derby. <laughs> so I saved that trophy. I'm going to bring it next time and just put it in front of the switch. Uh Yeah, I didn't I didn't come in any place in anything ever, yeah, but no. I had a billion trophies. Yeah, because he just gave it to you because we were of the generation where everybody thought, "Oh, we have to give everybody trophies." We didn't ask for these trophies. I know, and of course, he has to make fun of us. Yes, like it's our fault. Yeah, that he put us in these sports that we. Suck yeah, at. but he said like you millennials and your participation trophies, and I told him we didn't ask for these trophies. You boomers gave it to us, and our, our mom goes, "It wasn't us. It was Gen X. Gen X gave you the trophies." Well, they're our parents are very old. <laughs> yes, so I'll, maybe I'll give them that. Uh, this is the first thing that I'm unboxing. It is from 8 Do, and it is the dual wireless charge thing Ooh. that I was eyeing for Xbox. It's uh, Is that... Now, that's for an Xbox controller. Uh, correct. Okay, for the Microsoft-made Xbox controller. Correct. Because I forgot it. I I, I know I've, we've seen this before. We've talked about it, but I don't remember if it's for... The first party controllers or for the 8-bit 2 controllers? I saw pictures where it's the Xbox. Okay. But that means that it would need to have a different back. Of course, because we can't have they, they can't just work through the USB-C port on top. Yeah, let's open it up. Uh, uh, uh okay. So, so this looks like one of those old like iHome speakers. Yes. Uh I'm all right, you do that. Uh, Sifter224 said, That giveaway music instantly hyped me up at 4 a.m. while at my graveyard shift. Thanks for that. Oh, no problem. You're going to see that again in a few minutes. Yeah. Look, it is an Xbox because it yeah. has the, the stupid, stupid backplate. Yeah, it says Xbox One Bluetooth controller. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Because it's different for the series. It's yes. a different back yes. Xbox controllers 2020 plus. So the new ones. I guess. Yeah. Oh, there's a bunch. There's okay. A bunch. Oh, that's so good. That's, that's, there's four in total. And I, I, I mean, there's only two. So I yeah. Uh, Clayton Wright says, just found out Bob is a drummer. And I was like, that checks out. I'm going to use this. I'm excited I got this. Uh, now, this is confusing because this did not come from 8 Do, mm-hmm. but it has an 8 Do controller in it. Okay. So I'm very confused. That is interesting. Is. Yes. Um. Tiffany, what did that guy say about me being a drummer? Uh, just found out Bob is a drummer, and I was like, that checks out. Why, what? Because we talked about drumming last yeah, week. Yeah, but what, is, what does that mean about me? It means you look like a drummer. Okay. It makes sense that you would play the drums. So I don't know what this is. Let's see. This is, uh, oh, wait, it is a bit certif- certif- Certificate of Authorization. This is basically telling you you can talk about it. We hereby authorize... Amazon store Agnes to carry out online sales distribution of Ape Do products in the USA. Okay. And it's got a, a very strange, like, Chinese Communist Party <laughs> stamp. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> and they, they just gave me an Ape Do Bluetooth right. controller. This is the Switch one. Oh, nice. Here you go. Oh, thank you. You can have one. <laughs> Oh man, it's so, a very nice controller. So happy I bought that uh the uh, pro the the Pro 2 st- uh not too long ago. Now, they also gave me a case though maybe. This works with This works on Oh yeah, it does work on PC too. All right. I really don't understand what this what this is. Uh, they they gave me like a little fanny pack thing. Let me see that. Is this supposed to be for that? I guess. It doesn't feel like a controller case. No. No, there's no way a controller would fit in this. And then the same company gave, got us uh, this Switch 
grip type thing, which I bet is going to be like that dope one that I just... Oh, that you just pawned off on me that I just have hidden in the storage somewhere? The dope one? Didn't I rip it in half? No, you got two and you gave me oh, one of them. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I take it all back. This is the game cube. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. So this might actually be kind of cool. All right. I think it's for the OLED, though. You set that up. I will read Tiffany Tor uh, Torgerson. I totally agree. I hate Avatar. Was kind of peeved Disney made a whole ride about it, and ref and I refuse to ride it. It's so dumb. So it fits a regular one. Nice. That's kind of cool. I'll have to check this out. It, I mean, it doesn't really feel like a GameCube controller. I mean, no, like I mean, a C stick. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a regular controller. Well, yeah, it'd be hard to do because like the the D pad and the C stick are like offset. They're like inward just make the buttons gamecube controller buttons that's yeah. it that's that's all you need to do to make a fucking gamecube controller why all they did was make the c the, the right stick shitty the <laughs> only reason i want a gamecube controller as one of these yeah is if the buttons were like a game do you remember controller. when the switch uh was first revealed and like you they showed the joy con slide on and off and went thought like oh you could put gamecube controllers on the side and then shank mods did it and got a billion views yeah and then no one ever made well now you have one a frankenstein version of it but you have it nonetheless it's got a cool velvety back that's nice. yeah cool thanks oh they also sent Retro flag FC Joy-Con charging. Oh, this charges the. Oh, I thought this was one of those like thousand and one. Oh like, yeah. Things you see in like a mall kiosk, but mm -hmm. no, this is a Joy-Con charging. Okay, and it looks like cool. it looks like a Famicom. Oh, and the cartridge is for game games. You put oh, games on oh, the cartridge. Cool. That's re that's actually yeah. pretty cool. That's nice. I like that. Thanks. Thank you. P.O. Bow? No. <laughs> What's the name of the company? I threw it back. Uh, oh, all the way over here. No, over there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. You can't see it, but he's throwing the paper to try and find the name. Acnes. A-K-N-E-S. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, how much more of this do we have? Uh, M. Abram Binneman. LMAO, I... Remembered, I got flamed hard in a Discord chat earlier this year when I said that games today are worth more than $60, that game production costs have risen over the years, and it's not reflective in the game's price. I hate I hate people that think they know how the industry works when they actually know nothing about it. It's a hard truth. Like, yeah. Like, like it's, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow that uh, games cost more now to make, and they should cost more to buy, but... Uh... Nobody wants to hear that. Yeah. Nobody wants to pay more. I don't want to pay. Yeah, more. I don't want to pay more. I'm very happy paying the amount that I that I have to. And if they raise the price from sixty to seventy dollars, I'm like, well, I expect that. I mean, whatever it is, what it is, I'll do it. Yeah. They could. They should probably cost upwards of a hundred dollars some of these games. I mean, honestly, I remember some one time when I bought Rise of the Tomb Raider, like they kind of tricked me into buying the hundred dollar version with all the DLC because they advertise that more than they do just the base I game. Mean, when I worked at GameStop, they would tell you to just sell the more expensive version. Yeah. You know? So, like, there's times when I've been to GameStop, and I'm like, I think it was Uncharted 4. Yeah. The guy rung me up, and he's like, 90 bucks? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I want the $60 one. He's yeah. like, are you sure it doesn't come? I'm like, yeah, I want the regular one. I don't need any of that other bullshit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, we talked about this last week, but it's becoming more, I truly believe it's becoming more and more justifiable to not buy games at launch to just yeah. wait until like six months to a year when the game goes down in price when you know the dlc comes out and you, like, you get that for a good deal when all the bugs are fixed you know it just you don't have to play games at launch he does because it's his job but you don't and then i never touch him again yeah <laughs> timmy two shoes says who won that's a good question let's find out uh if you typed in exclamation point giveaway you don't have to do it again but if you didn't do it right now. You got two seconds. This will work. Are you knifing something? I'm just going to open this controller for a sec. See if it actually fits in the back. Oh, while you pick a winner. That's a good question. Okay, here we go. Get ready. Yay. Yeah. It's louder in real life. Yeah. Oh, well, you guys can't even hear it, I don't think. Oh, it's muted on there. Whatever. Oh. You'll, you'll hear it through our mic. Yeah. 
sorry, you graveyard shift guys and gals. <laughs> this person better be here. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, no! oh, what? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Brian, Brian Q, you almost took it from me. <laughs> All right, and you have to say something in chat right now. Or yeah. Say something in chat right now. Say something. Are you here? If you're not here, I'm gonna be very pissed. I don't want to roll again because this takes a lot of time out of the podcast. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. She give him like a countdown timer. This is the countdown timer. Okay. He's got 11 seconds left. We will roll again if he's not here. Oh yeah, let's roll a pick. Oh, so that is a little picky back to the controller. Cool. And... <laughs> and yeah. well, we're done. Now we have to roll again. What a waste of time. Maybe I'll win this. Yeah. <laughs> M. Skelton. Now I know he's... I saw him. Alright, where are you? Say something right now. M. Skelton, you better say something. Hurry up! You people drive me fucking crazy. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Thank heaven. All right, uh, I will whisper you after the show. So I keep like watching. You very much. Um, I guess that's the show, right? Yeah. I mean, we didn't really talk to people in the chat, but we gave them 50 bucks. So. Yeah. So <laughs> do you guys have anything you want to say yeah, real quick before we go? Before I go make pee? Will's got to pee. I do. Now it's just quiet in here. Yeah. Are you going to do another next week? Probably. Well, yes. Every single stream for the month of December, there will be a giveaway. Uh, Meta Ascension. If you don't think DLC pioneered the uh, li uh, the literary equivalent of DLC, just rip a quick scroll down this page, and it's a list of the Dungeons and Dragons rule books. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. <laughs> King Wizard says, "What's your go-to Wawa?" King Wizard, you lost fifty dollars in the last stream. By the way, you were pulled <laughs> as I think one of the first winners, and you weren't there. So, oh man, time to start watching. Yeah. Uh, go to at Wawa in uh, Arizona iced tea. Yeah. Okay, not Wawa, but Quick Check. We have Quick Check. We do have Quick here. Check here. Yeah. I got this chicken sandwich with cheese and 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 just like lettuce and tomato. Yeah. And did I get barbecue sauce? I don't know. It's fucking amazing. Really, it's I should incredible. try that. It was my like four bucks. My problem is like around here. If I want fast food, I can just go anywhere. <laughs> we're, <laughs> yes, we're spot that we have a lot of options. Yeah, here. We're like very privileged. A Wawa or a Quick Check or especially a Sheets. That's more of like a road trip food yeah. for me. Like it's good food. Don't get me wrong. But. Right. Wait, what is Wawa? Okay, it's a gas station that has a little iPad, and you can order food. It's on. like a gas station convenience store mecca basically they make sandwiches yeah uh konami man will that controller you want just a box made it uh make it into a video it looks like it might be good if it had enough features did you make a video on this already yes okay there oh, you go uh, youtube.com slash wolf den click around you'll see it it's one of, it's like i made it like a few weeks ago yeah it is a phenomenal controller it's also gonna be in my next video this I, week. I can't wait to try it uh Ba uh, somebody said, is Will going to be in the next or any new Nintendo podcast? Not the next, but potentially. Yeah, I, he was in one of the highest viewed. Videos, I was. I, think I was. He is the highest viewed TikTok on our. That's TikTok. what that's what they call me. That's what the TikTok Will Wolf over here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I get a signed poster? Uh, no. If you run into us somewhere and you happen to have a poster, then we will sure. sign it. Um, 
I meant the controller that the Switch slid into. Oh, oh. I don't know if I'm going to make a... If it had... I mean, I saw other people making videos on it. Yeah. If it had the controller... If it had the GameCube buttons, yeah. I would be a lot more excited. But it doesn't. So it's useless. Um. All right. We got to leave. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with the placement on all those respective platforms. Hey, Cisco Yeeted, thank you very much for the subscription. I appreciate it. Uh, I didn't check to see who's alive. Uh, you guys want to watch Amaranth? Go for it. Uh, who's on? I, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom of my follow list to, to <laughs> find my friend. Um, uh... God, no one streams anymore. Wow. Oh, here, watch Ham and Cheddar. I, I don't think I've ever rated Ham and Cheddar. Uh, go watch him. He's great. Uh, and hey, we'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye. Come over here for a, uh, you know, one of them uh, giveaways. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> That's fine, too.